I'm a Ghanaian. I'm not denying my roots, but I feel like I I, I had to live abroad. So I told myself that when I finish school, hey, I'm Japan. I'm not staying. I'm not even going to work. <laughs> and my mom was like, I should I should at least work for a year before I decide to travel. I really thank God for listening to her advice. I really thank God for doing that because I feel even though you are coming to the UK and they will teach you everything from like fresh. But if you know your skills, it's for your own good. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know here, like some things that are so simple in Ghana, like cannulation. It's like such a big deal. If you're able to touch a cannula, it will be a man of fans. Hey, you're good, yeah. you're good. So imagine you didn't know those things and they are now coming to teach you on top. Already they don't see you. And they're yeah. now coming to teach you how to insert cannula, how to put in a catheter, like those business. So I'm happy I worked in Ghana for a year to get like the skills before coming. So. Hello guys, welcome to yet another exciting episode in your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. It's been a while and today we have traveled all the way from our homes to another city mm-hmm. to meet the one and only celebrity UK Ireland, <laughs> straight out of GH. I beg you. What's up? I'm good, what's up? Thank ah. you guys for coming. Yeah. I feel honored. Like this is a big platform. I'm even shy. Like hey, shy. Hey, we're <laughs> <back>. <laughs> I'm shy. I'm shy. Yeah. So, how did you become famous? Okay. Ah, am I famous? <laughs> <laughs> how How did you go no. into content creation? No. Why did you want to go into content no. creation? No. So first off, I'm just a simple girl. I'm Benedicta. Yeah. <laughs> And I like, I already like posting on my socials, like WhatsApp, Snap and stuff. And I always like to post my lifestyle and everyone's like, oh, stop posting on the other social media platforms. Who knows? I just decided to post my journey from like Ghana to UK as a midwife. And that was it. All of a sudden, I started getting a lot of views. And since then, I've just decided to continue. So it's not like I'm a content creator or I'm some celeb. I'm just... If I feel like posting, then I post. Mm. I beg. Now you're passionate about it. Yeah, I like I like posting. Mm-hmm. So maybe if I keep doing well, maybe I'll I'll take it on a different level. You're doing level. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're sure. actually doing great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about midwifery. Yeah. Um, how long did you practice in Ghana? And let let's talk about your midwifery journey. Yeah. From Ghana to the UK, walk us through. Okay, so. You, you know when you're applying for your CV to come to the UK, yeah. national service is part. It's like a work experience. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me, I'll say I worked for two years in Ghana. That's for my CV. But if you ask those here, those back home, they don't count national service as a like a working experience. So it'll be like a year. Okay. So let me if I use my UK CV and what I use, I worked for two years. So mm-hmm. I worked as didn't I did my rotation third seven for a year. Then after I worked for a year at Pentecost Hospital, then I told myself that, nah, I don't see myself doing it in Ghana. I don't think I'm a Ghana girl. I'm a Ghanaian girl. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a Ghanaian girl. I'm not denying my roots, but I feel like I I, I had to live abroad. So I told myself that when I finish school, I'm Japan. I'm not staying. I'm not even going to work. And my mom was like, I should, I should at least work for a year before I decide to travel. And I really thank God for listening to her advice. I really thank God for doing that. Because I feel even though you are coming to the UK mm-hmm. and they will teach you everything from like fresh. But if you know your skills, it's for your own good. Yeah. Yeah, because you definitely. know here, yeah, like some things that are so simple in Ghana, like cannulation. It's like such a big deal. If you're able to touch a cannula, it will be a man of fans. Hey, you're yeah. good, you're good. <laughs> So imagine you didn't know those things and yet they're now coming to teach you on top. Already they don't see you. And yeah. they're now coming to teach you how to insert cannula, how to put in a catheter, like those business. So I'm happy I worked in Ghana for a year to get like the skills mm. before coming. So yeah, so basically that that's it. And I like media field because I feel no no disrespect to nursing. But I feel nursing is more like taking care of people so that they can die. Like She's stepping on toes, <laughs> <laughs> like so that they can die, or like they will be very, very ill. But midwifery is like bringing forth life, like you're always seeing new life. I know that sometimes things go wrong, but it's not all the time. But 
if every day I drink the leaves, every day I hear a new life, baby cry. Like it's 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 rough for them, but it is. And you create to work for <laughs> nurses. Yeah, because <laughs> we we'll, we we'll nurse them to, oh. to either get better or we we'll nurse them to a peaceful death. Oh yeah, but well, I feel say like you, you get more like yeah, complex, that, like yeah. you're seeing it. Even you're not good, you're not creating a new human being, but like you're bringing forth new oh, life. Yeah. And, yeah. That's that's what I like about Muji I don't think I'll I'll stop. It's like uh when you're midwife, sometimes you are the your face is the first thing mm-hmm. a baby sees even before seeing their birth yeah, period. Yeah. 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 Wow, that, I've never even thought yeah. of it that yeah. way. Like, so then the catch, like, yeah. Well, it's what's the feeling like? Because I remember um my very first delivery during mm. rotation. When I deliver until date, mm-hmm. I'm still in contact with that particular baby. Like with my mom. She's <laughs> nice. now probably like three or four. Are you years. sending her pounds? I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you? I, I do, I do. I, d- I definitely do. Um yeah, I do. I have pictures of her on my phone and all Ooh, that. Very that's beautiful nice. girl. Awesome. Yeah, so that feeling is great and you guys get to do it every day. Do you get enough of it? Do you feel like Yeah, every 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 breath is different. Every labor is different. Some some of them you come the difference ghana you say chim chim mommy chim then we, they don't really stay too long pushing unless maybe there's baby stopped somewhere or something but here you know you have to crock them pamper them oh you're doing very well come on take your time push do it keep going well done like so it takes time so that one if it's it makes the labor long then you get tired sometimes but if once the baby comes pay, you forget everything yeah. you forget the whole labor you forget like Rest, you forget yeah. everything yeah. When, it's like you, the moms when that, that's how you also feel when you go through the whole pregnancy process once the baby comes out yeah, you just forget everything yeah so so every pregnancy is different i don't think you get tired so talking of the difference between you know back home and here where you're like you know push mm. push push is there a difference between the quote-unquote minority mm-hmm. women, uh, mothers that you get and you know those ones here do you get that when they i mean is there a difference when the black ones come they're like push and that's it or they are now also doing the tender yeah, see, loving care thing i think it's because of how the training here is hmm. they treat everyone the same whether black or, yeah. or white so even though the person is a Ghanaian woman you, you can't go and say mommy chim or push push you still do the same you're doing well go 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 with your body take your time and all that and i maybe maybe they endure they endure pain but i think maybe they most of the Ghanaian women don't go for epidurals like the mm. the whites and mm. stuff and me i feel there's no um award in enduring pain like mm-hmm. i always say say if I now that I'm here mm. and I have access to pain relief, I have access to epidural, I have access to gas and a, I'll give it to 10 children <laughs> <laughs> because there's no reward in enduring pain. And they are getting your baby, so if they, there's all these services available for you and it's free, mm. epidural is free. Hey, but I, I learned uh, I'm talking from my layman's perspective, mm. right? Yeah. That, um sometimes when you make it painless mm. people feel lazier to, to push, push and then it can have some adverse effects mm. on the baby so when you use the epidural it only happens at the pushing bit so let's say if you are fully dilated at nine o'clock we don't let you start pushing immediately we wait for one hour so you start pushing at 10 o'clock that's what we'll say it delays the labor bit unless there's something wrong with the ccg baby's heart rate is not good it's going up normal then you can start pushing immediately at the nine o'clock and also you see the epidural numbs you from waist down mm-hmm. to your leg so you don't feel anything you don't feel any Contraction. edge so yeah they don't feel anything so they don't feel the edge to push because when it gets to pushing, it's the edges that will make you we say kind of like a bro chima chim. So like you yeah. feel it. When you feel the contrast, then you push back. They don't feel anything. So that's what makes it a bit slow. So that's when you guide them. So sometimes you palpate. When you when it comes to the pushing stage, there's two midwives. So you palpate their abdomen, then you tell that oh, you got a contraction building up. Or sometimes you can see it on the CTG. Then the woman just like you guide her and choose push then. Some of them yeah. do well, then they push and the baby comes. Mm. Mm. 
Great. Interesting. Yeah. So when did you relocate? Wait, wait, wait. Have you been to the labor world? Okay, you have. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've delivered oh, two, I've, two I've, babies. So, you know, I did my national service in 37 military hospital oh, in Ghana. Great. And you you go to so the holding area for the mothers like yeah. the ward itself mm. before the delivery suit yeah for some reason during my time i said officers wives come to mm. you bed they don't like Man. men to be there so yeah. i didn't have that experience so it was very unfortunate oh. i would have loved to don't worry. Very yeah experience that but when, when, yeah yeah when, when, when i get yeah, married yeah. and i'm giving men and I'm when his wife was yeah <laughs> you can, you can deliver your when i become a gynecologist maybe <laughs> <laughs> pressure yeah. yeah so when did you relocate to the uk so i've been here over a year i came last year july 27th July, I'll never forget. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> who, who, who can forget? <laughs> so, but yeah, 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 27th July. And when you come, you start as a band four. Then after you write your old key, you get your pin, then you start working as a band five midwife. But here, you know, it's super numeric. And I think because it's delivery suits and it's more like intense, we do the super numeracy for a long time. Because I did mine for like close to six months. Mm. Before I was signed off, I started working on my own. But now that I'm in the antenatal, I think I did super new shifts for like, I think 18 shifts. Since like I didn't do too much, then I'm now working on my own. So I think the delivery suit, we're just scared when we came because it's a bit intense. It's something, you know, legal issues. If something goes off, eh, which are pictures, everyone has seen that you have come to our bridge and now you're going back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you're doing something, you're always extra careful. You're making sure you're following the guidelines. Yeah, like, yeah, extra, extra careful. Yeah. And I learned the career path or let's say the progression here yeah. for midwives is a bit different from the nurses. So for nursing, it's, mm. it's, uh, when I came, I started as a band three okay. in my trust. Then after OSCE, you become a band five. For midwives, some starts as band four. Some even go from yeah. band five and then they go to band six so after. Yeah. So is it the same yeah, yeah. for it's, every it's, trust? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the same for our place. They said you go to band six after a year. So currently we are rotating through the world. So at least I've done labor world. I'm at anti. I'll be going to post in January there about. So when I'm done with all those words, then we'll go through, we'll go to band six. It's automatic, but it's just that you have to fill, they give you a preceptorship book. So when you sign all those and yeah. they feel, yeah, okay. Then you go to band six. So every midwife, no matter whether you're a Ghanaian or something, um, you go to band six after a year, but I think it's it's quite faster for them than us because they've trained here because yeah. we've seen some of them come then all of a sudden they are band six and we yeah. are still here so but it's it's unfair to nurses why is it uh, automatic progression i think because midwifery is especially yeah, kind of because i think until recently they yeah. were not even recruiting midwives yeah we are, we are like doctors hey, <laughs> hey. pressure easy, easy. pressure easy because it's more like autonomous like you are making the decision and if there's something wrong then you go and call a doctor to intervene here that at least we have doctors on standby every time but ghana you are making a big decision like it's just you yeah your god and the pregnant woman so mm. i think that's why midwife feels like special like this yeah. more speciality that's why i think you have to progress to band six right so in terms of um career progression what mm. are some of the of course, we know you automatically get to band six, but yeah. what are some of the specialties people can go into and people um, should start thinking about? Yeah, it is one day. Let mm. me check on Google before coming here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so most of the band sevens I've seen, they're like ward managers. Mm. Then they have other specialties like edu- more in the education bit. So most, mm. most of them will be our, my, our preceptor lead is a band seven. Mm. Then... For, I've seen midwife sonographers. So I think that those are band A's. Like, there yeah. are a lot. Yeah, we have midwife sonographers, the teachers, the managers, and like a lot of. I think ahead. even in every. Because recently, my trust was recruiting a uh, digital midwife. Mm. We've yeah. got to research midwife. So. Yeah, we've got yeah, research midwife as well. Yeah. we at our place in, in bereavement. Yeah. Bereavement yeah, midwife. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. 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 That's true. And that, and that that is when I came here, I was like, hey, like I don't <laughs> you wish never my, knew though. Hey, I don't wish my child to die, mom, but the way they treat a 
a dead baby it's, it's nice it's not nice but it's <laughs> yeah it's different yeah have you have you witnessed one before mm. how is it yes hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you see not to disrespect Ghanaian midwives but back when the baby dies we just we put the baby in a box yeah mm. then we give to them to take to the morgue or something but here it's like the like you do you, you dress the baby up like in this baby's clothes yeah put the baby in a cold coat the baby will be by the mother for like two or three days before they want to go and bury the baby they can wow. go and mm-hmm. they they take pictures with you and the baby take fingerprints like memories they, they it's Cream. called yeah creating memories wow so that you don't forget that child you talk about the child like the child is uh, so i feel that that part if Ghanaians adopt it it will be nice because yeah. whatever you, it is the child is also a human and the child is gone so at least if you have a memory something that will help you remember that baby it, it will be nice yeah uh, the, uh, it's the way we handle palliative cases end of life mm. death is a bit different yeah completely yeah, completely different it's yeah. a, a culture yeah completely yeah. different now um my final question on the whole midwifery thing. If you had to take two things from here and go and replicate back in here. By the way, would you want to go back to Ghana someday and work? No, I wouldn't like to go back to Ghana to work, but I would like to go back to Ghana to implement what I've learned here. So two today. things, two things you'd go back and implement. So communication, mm-hmm. the way we talk to the women yeah. here in ghana ghana i always say when i was singing i never shouted on my woman i never called them hey mommy bra hey me boo like I, I i never did that because uh maybe i'm soft but i couldn't do that but i feel here they don't i don't think you go to school and they teach you that this is how you talk to where you taught in nursing mm-hmm. school no i think it's part of the lifestyle so i think they have to adapt the way can you hug your patients back home where you hugging your patients mm-hmm. no. Yeah, but here, if the person delivers, congratulations, you can give the person a hug. Or oh, you've done very well, then you can hug the person. You can sit on the person's bed and talk to the person and they can break down, cry. Like, it's like the person is your friend. So that kind of communication, that kind of bond with the... Because I feel back home, the women are afraid to come and talk to their nurses or midwife. Yeah. Hey, my nurse, my nurse, like, they are mm-hmm. afraid. Yeah. But I'm sure maybe... Is the way they communicate if you talk to them more nicely they can always come to you open up to you that's a problem i think the communications is is one thing and the second thing is the equipment see <laughs> <laughs> see the way she did her hair she's about to spill it's about to go down <laughs> i don't i don't see why ghana government can't afford the equipment they have here like when i came here it was in the first I entered the theater in the labor world. It was like I was in a movie scene. I was just at standstill watching everything. Like, so it's real. And I feel these are basic stuff we can afford. Mm. I feel Ghana government can afford it. Because Ghana, we have money. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I feel we can afford like certain things. Because something like a CTG machine. What was that? Uh... So it's like a device that we use to monitor baby's heart rate. Mm. And here every room has one it's one woman to one city wow one woman to one city and i always say if I'm, i like pentacles hospital because at least we have things but if it wasn't for the fact that i worked at pentacles hospital and had seen a ctg before in my interview they asked me and at least i had an idea imagine i was in some village hospital and i had incident i wouldn't have been here today so at least you have an idea about it back home we had only one ctg for the whole hospital and it wasn't like a routine you just come when you start your cases is like severe then that's when we pop you on the ctg but here unless the woman is low risk everyone is like continuous ctg monitoring every woman is to one ccg and me what amazes me cry is the strap we put around the woman every woman and their strap brand new strap but back home one strap is for a lot of people <laughs> logistical you know yeah yeah and i and i feel we can do a lot of some of the things like um the privacy in the room like the labor would we had one room with three beds and a lot of women were pushing at the same time but here you have your own room you have your partner with you 
and it's just you alone you can have two birthing partners i think ghana we can do that because i think of Oedia hospital they this is not big enough but they've divided it into cubicles so you have your room and you and your husband and just you in that small room so if Kofredia Hospital has been able to do it, and now maybe if you go to the big, big hospitals, the GMC and the private, mm. they are doing, I think the other government hospitals can do it. So the communication, the equipment, and when, what we use to break the water, Ghana, we use needle. When we take a needle, then we break the end of it. Then we use to break the water. But here, we have a plastic hook thing, like I'm new hook. It don't even, you don't even hurt yourself. You just go then, like, these are... Basic, basic things I think we can use yeah. in Canada will help go like a long way. So, um, have you done any deliveries yet? Oh, yeah. How many? I've done over 10 or 12. Uh, yeah. That's nice. Burning. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've done. I've done. So, but it was during my super new period that I had a lot of deliveries because by then you'll be working with someone. So, I, I like to do the practical parts because the documentation they're brought for you have to do a lot of documentation so it's i do the delivery and day documents but they'll be there because you can't be working on your own so and as i've been known to panimu to have got some deliveries so we're all, we're still, yeah, 10 13 i've done i've done yeah i've done okay. quite a few so um walk us through a typical day of a midwife in the uk yes yeah. summer in summary so here when you get to work and the induction process to try and get the woman into labor back when we're using some tablets that we're putting sublingual cytotech yeah 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 but here they have gels and some pastries all this i never knew before i came here and breaking of the woman's water is also like a form of induction because after you get you induce them and get the cervix to open to uh maybe about two to three centimeters where it's easy to break the waters you that's when you take them to the delivery suits you put them on the ctg get a cannula in then you break the waters it's all all of this you are monitoring the baby you are documenting because if the baby is not looking good on the ctg you have to intervene immediately and that's what i like about this place that you have the doctors on standby like three doctors tier one tier two and tier three like consultant right then the st2 so if something should go wrong right now emergency buzzer then about 10 people are in the room i think that's one thing we're gonna we need we need emergency buzzer <laughs> <laughs> we do we, because we do, but, if yeah. there's an emergency what do we do do we shout what do we do i don't even remember some yeah. some hospitals do have they have yeah, call bells some, some EGMC yeah. Like this, yeah. yeah i'm talking about like that standard <laughs> <laughs> because these hospitals are like they are standard hospital yeah. everybody can just if walk something in. is happening yeah. you run and you know tell a colleague mm. bro. <laughs> <laughs> so i think we need we need um emergency buses then what i also like is the the theater the theater is on the same floor as the labor ward so if there's something going on, baby's heart rate is dropping, you can quickly move the woman on her bed to the theater. Oh. Me, my delivery, back when my labor ward was cast, so I, my theater was in my dinner. So they are now running all the way. <laughs> yeah. That distance, like crossing. But yeah. if at least the theater mm-hmm. is in the same ward, the same floor, if the theater is here, the wards are here, you can just quickly move. And it's not just one theater, two. Mm-hmm. Two theaters, just for maternity. And the neonatal units to are on standby. So if there's something wrong with the baby, you've got the neonatal team to resuscitate the baby. Mm. Back home, you are the doctor, you are the res- neonatal resource. You are the one resuscitating the baby. But here, if there's something wrong with the baby, at least they've touched the steps for resuscitating babies. But the neonatal team are always on standby. So if there's something wrong with the baby, quickly, they do something. So I always say here, before something should happen, you're always able to detect it early. Mm-hmm before it will happen but i think ghana may be grace because we were not having all these things but yeah with we're, the time. yeah we're still d- doing our deliveries yeah. everyone was fine the women were fine they're not bleeding yeah. they're not having pph they're not having 
mm. a whole lot of things. So I, I, I really don't know what maybe Grace is carrying. God mm. knows we can't afford it. That's why mm. <laughs> we are not seeing a lot. Of so food. when the water breaks, you take them to the delivery suit. So we, we don't um, break the waters down there. We take you upstairs to mm. break your water. Then that's when you try and get the contractions coming. So if the contractions are coming on your own, we don't start the hormone drip. That's the oxytocin. But if you realize that mm, your contractions are not really much, they're not regular, then you get a doctor to review you, review mm. the CTG if it's fine. And that's when we start the hormone drip at the lowest dose. Then you can increase it every 30 minutes if the contractions are still not regular. Then you just keep monitoring the woman till she has the baby. So if she has a baby too, so you have to pray. If she gets a tear, you do the steel train. But here, as simple as things are, if you, you, you see the student, you can't do it, call the doctor, the doctor will come and do it. Mm. Ghana, third, third degree, fourth degree <laughs> test, midwives were doing it, but here... It gives you the experience. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it Once it's you. safe and yeah. like everybody's happy. But yeah, here, absolutely. if you see the, the degree of the test too much, you can't do it, and you just get a doctor to do it, and the doctor will do it. If the woman is bleeding, she gets PPH, emergency buzzer, everyone will come in, help mm. and save something wrong with baby put the emergency buzzer but if everything is fine the woman has a nice delivery nothing you just after you, you after the delivery you give the baby to her skin to skin go and do your documentation then just leave her to spend time with the baby they like bonding with the baby they like mm. spending time with the baby then just leave them to spend some time then after you take them to the postnatal ward or sometimes if everything is fine with them they can go home straight from the labor ward so okay. Yeah. Now yeah. my last question on the midwifery bit. So, what are there any special qualities a midwife should have, or what would you say is an ideal midwife? How would you describe an ideal midwife? Well, I don't think there's any ideal midwife. You just have to be yourself and just make sure that as you are working, you are following the guidelines, mm. because that is what if you don't do the right thing. Your opinion here, your opinions are stick. If they strike you off, that's the end. And okay, why are you here? Home. It's your job that <laughs> brought you here. It's your your pin. So you have to make sure you're following the guidelines. You communicate well. If you don't understand anything or you don't know anything, you don't have an idea. Escalate. Ask someone. Don't be shy. They'll talk about mm. you, but at least it's better to save someone than go and do a wrong thing. Yeah. So just always ask the right questions and here too we have the trust guidelines it's always on the internet so if you're about to do something you don't even know you can go and look on the internet to get a at least you know but you want to follow the trust guidelines go on the inter- internet to get the trust guidelines you can print it and keep it with you and be looking at it whilst you are doing your work yeah which is very which is brilliant. Mm, no one will say hey you are now a uh, because sometimes you ask a doctor a question, Christ, you go and Google and look for it and yeah. tell you the answer. Yeah. So, yeah, what matters wow. is giving the right information, yeah. following the guidelines, go according to the guidelines, to go according to the guidelines, work appropriately, and do everything in the right way to help you mm. keep away from trouble, and, and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, your final words for. Any UKRM watching you and any other nurse across the world who is looking to come into the UK or, you know, practice wherever they are. Okay, so I know a lot of people are trying to still come. At this point, it looks like it's difficult, but who knows? My trust just recruited midwives and they're going to come in December. So do what you have to do. Write your IELTS, write your CBT. At least have those two. If you are applying for jobs you are not getting Try and do the self-sponsorship route. Come in, sponsor yourself, get your pin. I'm sure when you get your pin, it'll be easier to get your job. And also, don't just look at the UK. I always tell my friends that if you're not getting a job in the UK, don't sit down for your IELTS to expire. You have two years. Maybe give yourself maximum seven months, eight months, a year. If you don't get a job, start looking elsewhere. You can look at Ireland. I know America is difficult for midwives. I know the process is long, but for the nurses, you can look at America. Don't just focus on the UK. Mm. And the sky is big for everyone. You can't come. Sometimes we, we don't, at the end of the day, make sure you're not deceiving yourself. So that someone will be like, you've come to a bridge, you're a bra. Make sure at the end of the day, you're chilling, you're having fun, you're working, and you're saving money to do something down for yourself. So 
when you leave five years, six years, at least you've accomplished something. Mm. So make sure at the end of the day, you're not deceiving yourself. You're not pleasing anyone, but make sure you're also not deceiving yourself. Yeah. You're chilling, yeah. We'll talk about it all yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I like chilling. I like chilling. Chill. You have to chill though. The stress in this country, you have to chill. Chill. Right, guys. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Yay. Thank you. They are very nice people. Rich guys. If you need any help, just, just contact them. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell someone about fnf catch dialogue until we catch you in the next episode peace, peace. out